Hello to all physics enthusiasts and fans of physical experiments. This is Andrei Shchetnikov, and today I want to discuss a classic and quite fascinating problem. The problem is formulated as follows. There is a closed vessel completely filled with water, and somehow indeed an air bubble is held at the bottom of this vessel. And then this bubble rises up under the lid of the vessel, and the question arises of how the pressure of the water at the bottom of the vessel will change after such a rise. You can initially contemplate this problem on your own, and then look at what I will be discussing and what I will be doing. And here are the conditions of our problem. The bubble is currently at the bottom of the vessel. Let the pressure at the bottom be P which includes atmospheric pressure plus hydrostatic pressure, and possibly some additional pressure that has been pumped into the vessel. This is not important. And now at this point in time, the bubble rises up to a height h. And what should I say about this currently? Water can indeed be considered a nearly almost incompressible substance compared to air. And this means that the volume of the bubble at the bottom remains the same as it is. At the top. The bubble rose slowly, its volume did not change, and the temperature also remained the same. And thus, essentially, the air pressure in the bubble remains the same. Well, this essentially means that currently we have pressure P not at the bottom of the vessel, but at the top. Well, then at the bottom of the vessel, we have a slight increase in hydrostatics RGH. And this is how much the pressure at the bottom of the vessel should increase. Well, now just watch. Some people are immediately convinced by such reasoning due to its rigor, while others, of course, continue to wonder how the rise of a small bubble can change the pressure at the bottom of a large vessel. By the way, the pressure increases not only at the bottom, but also by this amount at any point in the vessel. And to make sure that everything predicted by the theory actually happens in reality, and also, just out of curiosity, I will now conduct an experiment. For this purpose, I have built this setup. There is a tall cylindrical tube with plugs securely at the top and completely at the bottom, filled with water. And the role of the bubble will be played by the cut inverted bottle in this experiment. Well, I will measure the pressure at the bottom of the vessel using a pressure sensor. The cut bottle, acting as the bubble, is held at the bottom with the help of a magnet. We remove it, the bubble rises up, and along with it, the pressure at the bottom of the vessel increases. The theory is confirmed by the experiment. Now let's take a closer look at the pressure graph. The initial water pressure at the bottom of the vessel was 5.6 kPa, which corresponds to 57 centimeters of water column in the tube. And after the bubble rose to the top, the pressure increased by 3.8 kPa. However, the bubble rose by 44 centimeter, and an increase in pressure of 4.3 kPa could be expected. kPa. What exactly is the cause of the loss of 0.5 kPa? And to understand this, we need to rewind back a bit and look at what model we used in our initial reasoning when solving the problem. In this model, we considered water to be an incompressible fluid. We assumed the walls of the vessel to be undeformable. And we also assumed that all the air inside the vessel is contained in the bubble that is rising. In reality, water is still somewhat compressible, although I believe that this factor is not the most significant. Next, the vessel, our pipe, its walls deform and crumple as the pressure inside increases, as do the upper and lower caps, which are made of foam plastic. And the air is present in the bubbling throughout, with a few air bubbles remaining under the lid and in the tube that connects the vessel to the pressure sensor. There is also air inside that slightly compresses when the pressure within the entire system increases. Well, I think that these factors lead to the conclusion that the pressure does decrease somewhat. During the rising of the vessel compared to the predictions of the ideal theoretical model. And now, before moving on to the final question, I would like to ask you for your support of our channel. 
It currently exists mainly due to the funds from the company CTR and also thanks to the support that our viewers are already providing. And I would like this support to be more significant. Additional information on how to make donations is written below the video on YouTube. You can read, invest, and support us even with even small amounts. There will be a noticeable support in our activities. We are currently not receiving any grants, even though it is stated that we are from Novosibirsk State University, but we are graduates and we do not have any financial support from the university. Everything is made possible by the fact that there are people who want our channel to exist and develop. And now I will move on to the concluding question, which will be as follows. Since the bubble that was certainly rising did not change its volume, it seems that we can definitely take and enclose this bubble in a rigid shell that will not change its volume. And this shell will rise up like this. On one hand, it seems that nothing has changed. Therefore, with this approach, the pressure in the vessel should, according to our reasoning, increase when this rigid bubble rises. On the other hand, what difference does it make where this shell is located inside the vessel? It seems that the pressure should not change. And these two statements, at first glance, contradict each other. So which one is correct and why? Please share your thoughts on this matter in the comment section of this video on YouTube.